Hey, what's up? It's Sifu Cuddle, and in this video, we're going to be focusing on techniques not only with the sword, but with the scabbard as well. So technically, it's kind of like dual wielding, but at the same time, it's not because we have one very specific purpose for the scabbard, whereas we have multiple purposes for the sword itself. Now, this is something typically not done with many swords because the scabbard is made out of wood or leather or some soft material that would just get beat up, broken, or chopped in half within just a few strikes in combat. However, it is something that we can still explore under the right context and there are certain swords that have been made with metal scabbards specifically for the purpose of them being used in combat as well. So. Um, this video, I'm using the Royal Arsenal Han Do by LK Chen, and I picked this one specifically because of uh, the scabbard itself matches the, the, the sword. There's no extra fittings that get in the way, and if anything, this is a very useful um, shape or end cap to the scabbard that can be used to kind of grab. So I actually found this to be kind of a really unique and nice sword that we can explore some uh, about four techniques with this one. Now again, it's important to remember this is not something that would be like your battlefield thing to do. You take out your, you know, you pull out the scabbard and the sword and then you just start swinging and hitting because you'll probably just break your scabbard. What you want to think of this in the context of um, more of a dueling sense, more of a one-on-one -on -one fight where you have the time to feel the other person out, you're probably going to end up making contact with the swords first before anybody tries to make a serious move. So it's very specific context here. Again, not something you just run into combat with. Of course, maybe in a last resort, you, you have no other choice, but you'll probably just break your scabbard anyway. Scabbards like this, wooden scabbards were just traditionally made to hold your sword without hurting yourself. And then once the sword was withdrawn, you just use the sword. The other hand would have a shield or another weapon in it. Okay, so with that said, take these techniques for the, how they are, look at the combat principles, and then you can apply them in different ways. Okay, so let's go get to work. The first thing I'd like to start with is withdrawing the sword from the scabbard. Now, typically people are used to having the sword at the side, so they're just going to have the hands in this general position. Um, if it's loose in the sash or the belt, you can rotate it depending on how you want to draw the sword. That's fine and all, but we are going to be using the scabbard as a part of our attack and defense. So I prefer a different grip for this one. Now this grip in particular requires both hands to be facing in the same direction, which is not a typical way to carry the sword. But again, if you, if you have your scabbard like this, you're not going to use it in combat. So the sword should be out with the scabbard, at least for this point. And then what we're going to do is we're going to grab at the base of the, or at the mouth of the scabbard, right where the sword is. But my thumbs are pointing towards the tip. From here, it's actually very natural and very easy to separate both hands, not just pull in one direction or pull in the other, but to separate both hands and quickly present the sword and scabbard and have those at the ready. So I actually prefer that for this, especially because this particular scabbard has that nice shape at the end that sticks out a bit that can actually hook and pull the sword with it. So we actually have some extra technique that we can do with this one, a little bit of extra control for this scabbard in particular, okay? Now, again, you may not have to worry about being in the surprised moment and you have to get your hands ready to withdraw the sword. This could be something you already have it drawn and turn your hands around, but this is a very natural and comfortable way to get the sword open and ready, okay? So just make sure you know where you're grabbing. You don't wanna end up cutting your fingers right off the bat. <laughs> now that we have the sword and the scabbard at the ready, the foot position is kind of up to you here. It, I prefer to have my attacking hand back because I like having the idea of a, um, a shield or an obstacle in the way of my opponent. This will make them less apt to just directly attack and then I have to try to adapt and then catch up with my blocking weapon. However, if you prefer to have that attacking side foot forward, that's totally fine too. You can make these techniques work as well. So what we're going to start with is the idea of we have already established contact with our opponent. So in more of a dueling or a fencing setup, you're not always going to start from way back here and then just try to move in and chop an attack. We're not gonna be starting from there. This is where 
Um, you're kind of batting at the other person's sword, you're in close, you're trying to set up and make an opening. What we're going to do is use the scabbard for control. So scabbard's really not going to be on the attack for these techniques today. We're just focusing on controlling the blade, creating an opening, and then attacking in. Now this could be used against a single blade or a dual, uh, if they have two blades as well and they have a, a very open lead. Okay, if they have two blades, just be prepared for the other one to be used once you actually commit to making contact. So you have to choose your openings wisely. Okay, now from this position, I'm just basically going to think of covering and pressing down and then I'm going to come straight over the top. Okay, so again, if I connect here, I'm going to press down, try to lower their attacking hand or lowering their guard, opening up right in front and chop over the top. Okay, so from here, really simple, press, hit, and then we can return from there. Now, when I strike, I think of taking this part of the blade, just this last chunk here, and I'm going to go straight in at about face level. Okay, you can use this to attack wherever it's available and open. We can change the angle of the cut, the slice, the type of the cut, chop. You can even go for a forward thrust. But the basic of that we're going to focus on right here is once we connect, control, tap, and then get back to our neutral position. Now for our second technique, rather than pressing downward and attacking over the top, we're going to focus on raising up the opponent's guard. Now this doesn't have to be much and you don't have to think of it as a huge straight up lift. We're actually going to be doing more of a forward press here. Once we end up finding their blade moving a little bit lateral or getting a little bit tip uh, forward, this is where we can take advantage of that. So I can actually use both. Tap here to have them try to put some energy back to return and then control as I press forward. Now, you could just go in straight with a stab but this particular type of sword without a guard could lead me into losing my grip and slicing my own fingers. So I'm going to rely on what this sword was made for uh, and it's, it's really its best strength is for slicing. Now from clearing and stepping in, I'm going to slice low and try to attack at the legs. Those will be a little bit closer than the body. And even if they start leaning back or trying to pull back, I still have a good chance of getting it. The, the thing that I want to follow up with though is once I attack across here, I still have a chance to follow with the second attack. Now this goes with some traditional broadsword technique for Chinese broadsword. We're going to flip the blade after we cross so it can safely rest on my side here. The blade edge is outward and then I can follow straight back with that. So you notice the hand flips so that the spine of the sword rests along the body on either side. Now you don't have to let it rest on the body. You can end here and then cut back. But the idea is we're not trying to just stop gas and brakes here. We're letting the energy um, diffuse from the sword. Okay, so from our neutral position, we can have both, uh, both of these forward. And then here I clear up and then I can return back to this position. Okay, so again, I have I made that connection. I clear slice one slice two and then I prefer to come back around the shoulders with a wrapping the brain technique or you can just from this position just return back to a neutral position that's up to you so if I'm facing towards you from here I've connected then one two and then back to here our third technique we're going to be working more on getting to the side of our opponent so if our opponent is forward here, their intention is forward, we're controlling, and then we're trying to step away from that center line. Now, this doesn't mean that your opponent cannot just track and follow you, but you want to try to move a little bit forward to get a better, better angle on their body and have more of openings available to you. So what we want to do is make sure that when we take this step, first off, they cannot easily track us. So we want to control and move our opponent's weapons away. There may give force against force resistance from that, but that's fine because that allows this one to do what it wants to, okay? Now this is similar to our last technique where we came underneath and we had the sword flip over. We're going to use another technique just like that. So once I find control here, I want to press downward, okay? So think of almost doing like an X blocks uh, X block to press downward here. 
I can control with just one, but again, think of once you've made contact with the sword itself, this one's going to step in, control, and move outward. Then from here, I'm going to step, attack up high, and then come underneath for that second one. Attacking up high, of course, we can just come back through, but if you follow up around, you still have that opening here. After you control here, if they're gonna raise up, we still have control, and they're still open on this side for that second slice. And then of course we can come back around and set up for our guard position. So again, from here, we have that control. We've made that moment of control pressing downward. So that maybe we got on top of their blade, clear around two and then back. Okay. So it's up to you how much you want to do out of those. I still prefer having a follow-up Everything, it doesn't always have to be just a single attack after a single block, single attack. Combinations tend to set up more openings and uh, raise the percentage of actually landing your techniques. Our final technique is going to come from a different direction. Our very first technique was striking high. Our second technique was striking low horizontally. Our third technique was striking from one side. Now we're going to focus on striking from the other side. Now, this is actually a more simplified version because we're, the, the movements can be a little bit difficult. So we're not going to end up doing a uh, like 10 strikes in a row. You don't have to worry about that stuff. What we are going to focus on is a quick wrapping around the head and then following with our cut across. Okay, so we can come back if we want, but for this one, we'll just leave it at this cut straight out. Okay, now again, I want to have from that initial contact, if their sword is right here, I want to use my sword to press a little bit, push to the outside. Then from here, I'm going to use my scabbard to push and continue that press, give that a uh, little bit of uh, force that they want to fight against to slow them down. And then from here, I'm going to wrap and then at attack towards the head. Now, of course, I can follow through and just do this continuously, or I can come back through here and attack again. This I'll leave up to you. But our first part is to block and then attack right here. You will see this commonly in flowering positions. And really, this is when we break it down into more of an uh, application. This is what you could be doing with it. Now, of course, you could still keep your blade in front of your own head as you do this. You can just bring it in front of your own face. But I, I personally don't like to do that too much because there's still a chance that they may attack me by hitting my own blade. And as I'm moving back this way, I have a chance of hitting myself in the head. Once I remove this out of the way, they're really not sure what's going on here. Okay, And then I have this side to, to still have some defense while I'm setting up for this chop. So again, once we've made that contact here, we're gonna come across, okay? Now, <laughs> I just dropped underneath. This is typical to see in some of the forms uh, when you're using two swords. Um, if you want to, you can still always continue to practice having contact and keeping that blade outward as you wrap around the head here, okay? So that's our last technique, focusing on moving across the body and then attacking from the side here. Now, of course, you can just drop back to your neutral position from there and then continue the exchange. Okay, so there you have it. Now, if you happen to have this sword, this is actually a really nice combination to practice with. It's very unique and it still develops off of the basics of your single hand broadsword techniques. Now, do be careful though, because if you do buy an LK Chen sword, they usually come sharp unless you specify to have a dull or a blunt edge. So make sure if you guys are practicing, practice safe. Don't be ridiculous. Don't be reckless. Don't hurt yourself over trying to look fancy, okay? Now, if you have any questions or if you have any advice for anybody else that's looking to get into uh, Chinese swords, go ahead and drop those down in the comments below and I will try to address those or pin those to the top if it's very valuable information. Otherwise, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll leave a link to where you can actually get this specific sword down below. And um, if I have a review up uploaded um, at when I upload this video, I'll have a link up here or later on when I actually finally release that video, I'll leave that link up there so you can take a look at it. But again, this is the Royal Arsenal Hondo from LK Chen and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed these techniques. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.